Eagles. Well, it's certainly not uh, welcome to live uh, after the game with Todd Leary live from Yogi's, of course, brought to you by Best Beer Incorporated of Bloomington when you're out and about, especially here at Yogi's. They got $2 Coronas, and these are virus free, All by month. the way. Oh, my. Uh, also, Henry Nethery Remax, looking for a place to live. Henry Nethery Remax Realty here. Uh, Man, this is not the day that the Indiana fans wanted to see. It was a, t- a tough game, no doubt, because Wisconsin's won eight in a row now for a good reason, and uh, Indiana gave them all they wanted for a while. But, man, Wisconsin owned this second half. Yeah, it's time to, uh, if you're an Indiana fan, I would invest in Alka-Seltzer or Tums or whatever it is because the next week of anxiety and, and worry just got a lot worse. And this is, this is a game that... Uh, you know, Indiana. I don't never controlled, but really uh, played well enough to be ahead throughout most of the game. And and you know, if you want to try to figure out a reason why Wisconsin is going to win a, a share of the Big Ten title, the, you know, the answer to that is they they figure out a way to win at the end of the game, and they make the plays on and, the road. And they've no done less. it all year long, and that's exactly why they are where they are because they've got some veteran guys that really understand how to play. You know, as soon as I saw what really worried me, one thing that worried me a bunch today was when I saw the starting lineup that Wisconsin put on the floor. Um, I'm all about Archie Miller starting the seniors, so I had no problem with Deron Davis and and, uh, uh, Devontae Green starting. and They actually played great. But when I saw the matchup issue that Wisconsin went after in starting – Oh, the kid that tra- Potter, the Potter kid that transferred from Ohio State. When I saw that they were starting him, I knew they felt like they had an advantage somewhere, and and they really took advantage of it. They, Potter ended up with 14 points and was just a real mismatch. He had 11 rebounds. I'm, I think at least five or six of those were offensive. So um, I, I think Wisconsin saw a mismatch that they had and they took advantage of it. And, and you know, you could see that from the very beginning of the game. Yeah, and, and there were portions of it. Dennis uh, asked, how many shots did IU miss inside five feet? There there was a, a stretch. Yeah, yeah, and there was a stretch there in the middle where they just couldn't get the ball in the hole. And, and Wisconsin, they had the lead on them all day. They, they, they withstood a torrid three-point shooting team. They're very good from out there, and they withstood that for a long time. But, man, let's talk about a tale two halves with Devontae Green. Wow, yeah. man, he started off and looked like him and, and Duran were putting this team on their back today. They scored the first 11 points, I think, between the two of them. Devontae, 16 points in the first half. Yeah. Zero in the second half. Yeah. That's I mean, a killer. It was definitely, you know, the, the momentum, if that's what you want to call it or whatever, just kind of changed offensively on both sides. You know, everything became a, a grind after about the 10 minute mark of the first half, and, and it was a difficulty for both teams to struggle. And Indiana was fortunate enough to finish the half of the lead, and, and you know, it was definitely, uh, you know, I felt at halftime like Indiana was, was really, had given away about seven points. I mean, they, they should have had, they had a three-point lead, and it really should have been about a ten-point lead. They didn't score for a long time at the end of that first half. And, um, you know, it, it, it became if Devontae wasn't going to score. I mean, this is a game I truly have not even looked. Yeah, Trace Jackson Davis. Six points on eight shot attempts. Um, you know, you tell us that going into the game, and we would have said they would have, Indiana would have never had a chance. Yep. It was just it, it, uh, Trace never got involved in the offense. Like he was never a part of it. I know they were trying to get in the ball through different things, but he was never, never a real big factor in in the offense. And, and um, you know, it, this was this wasn't a pretty game. I, I, but you give Wisconsin credit for that. They have done this to a lot of different teams. Thank you, guys. They have gone in and and won in a lot of tough environments. They won at Ohio State. I mean, they, they've they've beaten some really good teams. So this is not a terrible loss. It's one that you just you really would have liked to have finished the year out on a high note, and this would have solidified a, a tournament appearance. Yeah, they did a good job uh, keeping Indiana's shots. Well, actually, Indiana did a good job too of keeping their shot percentage down. They shoot thirty four percent on the day, uh, three point shooting. They actually shoot forty percent on the day. All day long and twice on Sunday, you will take that. Sure. But it was not enough to overcome the lack of production inside. Well, I mean, we and we talked about this before. And look at it, especially playing at home. But but Indiana only scoring 56 points, that's not enough to win. I mean, that is – you can't expect to win that game, only scoring 56 points. And, and, you know, there's been games Indiana has gotten away with it. 
But you look at Indiana 6 of 15 from the three-point line. I've been saying all year long they've got to be able to make, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 three-pointers to win against really good teams. And, and Wisconsin didn't live and die there. They made nine of their – they made nine three-pointers. Indiana made six. That's a big difference when you get down to the end of the game. And, and Indiana, I mean, Devontae made three and, and Al made one and Justin Smith made one. You know, uh, Wisconsin had guys step up and make them. Uh, D. Ford is not a guy that has shot the three-point ball very well all year long except for against Indiana. And he's three of five today. You know, that guy's hoping that he that he gets to play Indiana every game of the year because he really plays well against the Hoosiers. But, you know, you can go down to it, and it's as simple as this. We discussed in the last ball game, Indiana had all five starters in double figures. Today, one. One player in double figures, and that's it. And four players in double figures for Wisconsin. They had it was it's tougher to defend when you got to defend four different guys that are scoring. Indiana had one guy that was scoring throughout the day, and yeah. he scored them all in the first half. Like yeah, and then he goes away. So right. now now you're looking. They don't know where to go turn to next because the first half they knew exactly where to go. They didn't have to go anywhere. It was it was leading them, and and they did, there was not that leader in the second half. We we talk about free throw shooting. Indiana did not do a good job of getting to the line today, but I'll tell you who did. Wisconsin. They took 22 shots at the line. They only hit nine of those with 70%. You'll take that. Indiana, no, only, only 15 they opportunities. Only hit, they only hit 10 free throws. You're looking at three-point field Oh, goals. yeah, you're right. They only took 10. But but here's the here's the bad part. So you look at Indiana. Is it 10 of 15 from the free throw line? Same amount. Yeah. But the, when the game was kind of at a point where Indiana, I'm not going to say could have put it away, but could have made it much more difficult for Wisconsin to come back. Trace Jackson, Jackson Davis misses the front end of a one-and-one. Had a chance to take the lead to nine at that point. It never got to nine. They were never able to get it up there. Um, and that was a big swing because it came down the other end of the floor. And immediately, um, Potter got fouled again. He made both of his free throws. So instead of it going from seven to nine, it goes from seven to five. And that's a big that's a big turnaround and a big difference. And Joey Brunk, uh, I know he missed at least two free throws. So, yeah, he's 0 for 2 from the free throw line. And those were two gigantic free throws. I mean, he had a chance also to put it to nine. He misses both of his. Potter makes his. It's just th- well, there were some simple plays that took place that Indiana didn't miss the free throws at the very end of the game, so it's not a glaring statistic, but they missed them at a p- critical point in the game when they could have extended the lead out. And at that point, if you take the lead up to nine points, you've got a chance to put it out of reach, and, and they didn't. Tom asked, why did Race get stuck with Trice on those last two possessions? Is, is that a matchup that you want to see? or Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you, if you go back and watch the game film, I will tell you what, in, in just simple form of here watching what Wisconsin was trying to accomplish, they did not respect Indiana in defending the ball screen. Uh, they were running, Travis, or uh, Travis Trice, that's his dad, uh, Trice was dribbling off of ball screens. He would dribble off one side of the floor and dribble off the ball screen, get another one at the top of the key, get all the way to the other side and turn around and dribble back. Like, they were just waiting on Indiana to screw up one of the ball screen hedges or switches or whatever they were doing. So they were playing for the mismatch. And, and you know, quite frankly, I'll, I'll take, you know, Race Thompson can get – he and Trace both can guard a guy out there. Like, I don't think that hurt him near as bad as, you know, at the beginning of the game when you had Deron Davis and, and Joey Brunk trying to defend – Rooters out there at the three-point line and Potter at the three-point line, like that's not a matchup you ever won, and, and Wisconsin took advantage of it. Yeah, they did a great job of taking Indiana out of their game and, and exploiting them for that, and this is something they're going to have to deal with because everybody else is going to try this. It works, so we're well, going to see a and, lot and more and look, of this. We've said, we said it in the last few ball games When when Indiana um, has guys step up and, and multiple guys step up and play above what your expectations are, Look, if Trace Jackson Davis alone plays good in this game, Indiana wins. I mean, no. Devontae Green's first half was incredible, so you have to give him credit for that and say, hey, they, you know, they uh, he showed up for senior night. I mean, he had 16 points. You can't argue with him, you know, the effort he gave. He kept him in it, got him the lead. But, but no one else stepped up. I mean, I thought Al Durham played pretty solid throughout the game. I thought Fennessey struggled. I didn't think he yeah, ever He didn't looked bring a lot today. He didn't look comfortable. I mean, he didn't. And, you know, we've talked about it. There's a, Right now I'm talking about him being comfortable as opposed to having an actual positive contribution. And, and you know, I thought both he and Trace Jackson Davis and Joey Brunk, I, I didn't think any of them ever looked like they got comfortable in this ball game, and they didn't contribute 
a whole lot offensively. And the sure. energy in that building, it's a shame because there was there was probably the most energy in that building today than I have seen all season. They were ready for a win, and they were supporting them. Uh, hopefully that continues because the big question now, everybody is lighting this up and talking, are they NIT bound? Not yet. They, they're, they're not. Do you think they're going to be in the first four out? Tomorrow, tonight, whatever, they make this adjustment? You know, I mean, like I'll tell you, based on the numbers, if you truly just looked at it based on the numbers and Joe Lenardi doesn't doesn't input his opinion. In past years, I think he's always gained his credibility because he's always used facts and numbers. And now I don't think he's doing that anymore. I think he's using his opinion and what he thinks. I heard him say yesterday, watch out for Arkansas this weekend because I think they're going to have a big weekend. He didn't used to think. He used to just report what was on there and say, "Hey, this is what they look at, and this is what you know. This is where they stand right now." And right now, he's saying what what he thinks should be the case. And, and I, you know, I think Indiana should still be hanging on by a thread, depending on what happens in the other conferences. Northern Iowa losing in the first round of their, you know, what what's the committee going to do with that? Bit Steelers. Now we talked about yeah. this. Hey, uh, welcome in, of course, uh, live from Yogi's or after the game, live with Todd Leary, a former Indiana basketball player, of course, as Indiana takes on uh, the Wisconsin Badgers today, and uh, they do not come out with a win. But now, everyone wants to know about the NCAA tournament. I think that they have work to do, but they have an opportunity to do that because, yep. number one, they're going to be playing on Wednesday. Well, sure playing on Wednesday. Uh, so they, that's not going to be a quad one win, no matter who they play. That second day will give them an opportunity for yet another quad one win, which do they need another solid win to get in the tournament, do you think? Uh, or, you know, I, I think right I know they now, have to win one game. I, I think right now they're sitting in the, in the, from the, in the perspective of they're in – but hanging on by a thread, and depending on what happens in some of these other conferences, they could easily get be one of the teams that gets bumped out. They have to win that first game. If they lose the first game, which is going to be to Nebraska, I'm assuming, if they lose that first game, they're out. 100%, they're out. I don't, I don't see any way they make it if, if that's the case. But I don't, I, you know, I don't think that'll happen. I truly believe, you know, they've got to look at it right now as. Um, you know they've got they've got a two game season right now to make the NCAA tournament, and that second game is going to be against a team just like they just played. Yeah. It's going to be against a you know. A, the only thing is, it won't be against that team because Illinois. they're going to be, they have a double bye because yeah. they're fighting for a Big Ten championship, which they get a piece of that now. After congratulations, you got to take your hat off to Greg Gard, Wisconsin. They were picked to finish like tenth, eleventh, or twelfth in this league this go, year. Go look at how they started the season out. They were miserable. They were terrible. Crazy. And the first, you know, they should thank Indiana because their first game in the Big Ten was against Indiana, and they had they gained all the confidence in the world from that point on. And they've been a different team since the the Big Ten has started. But you know what? Here's the, here's what here's a positive to look at from that perspective is, you know, there's more talent on Indiana's team than there is on Wisconsin's team, and it's not a coaching issue. It's the fact that. Wisconsin understands how to play, and they understand how to make plays. They trust themselves. They know if they can hang around and be there, they have a chance to win. They're going to make the plays, and and they trust themselves and play well together. And that truly is all that it comes down to. In Indiana, this is a learning curve year for them. Um, I'm still not writing the year off. I, I truly am not. I, I think that they still have a chance. I'm, I'm going to go down to, to the, the wire battling for this team because I think that they have a chance to really not just make the tournament but win a game or two in the tournament. I agree. Chris point, uh, asked, they went at Porter only one time in the last six minutes of the game with him in foul trouble. I think he had four fouls that he, that he was able to make it through that last section and that's a good point. And, and, I mean, and, and it is but think like this is the point of what I'm saying. Trace Jackson Davis was never engaged in this game and, and Joey Brunk not engaged in this game. Those guys in, in a regular circumstance and and I've, I've been saying this all year long. Trace Jackson Davis is not a great post player. Okay, He's extremely athletic and physical and big, and he scores more on putbacks than he does offensive moves. But he's not a guy you're going to say, hey, runner offense, swing it around, I'm going to dump it in the post, and we're going to watch him, and he's going to make a move or get a foul. He doesn't do that very often. He's not great at it. I think he's not be there yet. At, he's definitely not there yet with that part of his game. But that's the answer to that question is why would they not go do that you know, that wasn't a part of the offense. It wasn't a part of what they were comfortable in doing. And, and there wasn't ever a point I thought, 
that Trace Jackson Davis looked engaged in this game. Not nothing, no discredit to him. I just don't think he could get himself involved. It, this can almost get cliche, but I, I but I somewhat agree with it. Jesse says Indiana has to learn to close out games, play the full 40 minutes. Anybody can say that, but there is truth to that because that is sure. exactly what Wisconsin did on the road today. Yep. They never quit. They were down basically the whole game, but they kept doing what they were doing, and they let the process work, and it did work, and they never stopped. And uh, I, that is There is a lot of truth to that because Indiana, then when you look at the teams, they failed because they didn't do in the second half what they were so successful at doing in the first half. Yeah, and, and you know what? Like it, it comes down to exactly what you're talking about. And Sorry, I'm looking this up as we go here, but, but let's just go over Wisconsin – Exactly what you're talking about in finish, finish, figuring out a way to finish games. Wisconsin has won in the last couple of weeks at Michigan, at Indiana now, at Nebraska. Quad you one, quad that. one, quad yep. two. At Ohio State. Quad one. Yep. At, uh, they lost at Purdue. They win at Penn State. I mean, quad one. This is a this is a team that they've been had, racking up quad one they wins have along the way. Figured out a way. The road and home to them is not near as big of a factor because they trust themselves. And at the end of the game, here's what they have. They have guys that they know have a mismatch inside. Potter can play inside, outside. Bruders can play inside, outside. So if you've got Kofi Coburn in the game at the end of a game, if you've got Joey Brunk in the game at the end of a game, those guys are going to move out to the three-point line, which what does that – like, I'll I'll tell you this. You know what that does for me as a player? It tells me the lane's going to be wide open. And I'm going to be able to drive. I'm going to be able to get there because – what do we do at the end of a game? We try to dump it inside to Trace Jackson Davis, which means there's nowhere for me to drive. There's nowhere to go. And, and I'm not. I'm just. I'm just saying. Wisconsin has figured out their niche, and they've. And it works. I don't want to say perfected it, but they are. They're on really the verge of perfected it. They're, they're really, really good. They at are it. really good. Now at that, it. that begs the question, and I'm not going. We're not going to turn this into a Wisconsin show, but as we get toward the NCAA tournament, teams that have a, a, a legit shot. Is that a, a team that you think has a legit shot to win a national championship? No. I think they'll lose in the first game of the tournament. I said that earlier today. Before they beat big, Indiana. Big take! Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't think they'll make it out of the first weekend. I, I really don't. I think that that Wisconsin team is a team that could lose to anyone. I also think they could beat almost anyone. They couldn't beat Gonzaga. They can't beat Dayton. They couldn't beat Baylor. They can't beat Kansas. They can't beat some teams like that. But they can beat almost everybody else. They can they scare can, some people. Yes, they can beat San Diego State. They could beat some teams like that. You know, they could beat Villanova. But I don't think that that team I – th- I also believe that team is also one of the ones that – here's what they're going to do for themselves right now. With that win, as long as they can go win one game in the Big Ten tournament and get to the finals, they're going to put themselves at a three or a four seed, which this year alone is a gigant. it's the biggest difference it's ever been. In, in my opinion, like I yeah, truly believe they're they're they put themselves in a position to get an insanely high seed. And if that guy doesn't win Coach of the Year in the Big Ten, I will I will truly. You, you know that's funny. There, uh, one of the national guys put out a uh, a Naismith uh, Coach of the Year list. Uh, I don't think Greg Gard was on. Pat Chambers was on it, but not Greg Gard. I, I don't get that. He was picked to finish twelfth in, in the toughest conference in America and is going to end up winning well, it. So so I mean, think about this though. Look at look at it from this perspective. Do you think there'll be one player on that team that makes first team all Big Ten? <laughs> oh, on Wisconsin? No. Not a chance. No. But uh, the but that's big a, guy, the big guys are not going to beat out Garza. And that shows you how good of a team Kofi. you have. That's what, it's exactly right. There's and how not, well you're listening to your you coach. You and I and talked about it all week long. Ever since they won that game with Minnesota, we've talked about it all week long. I can tell you, I can scout. I physically can take game film that I can pull off the Internet, and I can scout every team in the Big Ten except for Wisconsin. I can't figure out what they're good at. <laughs> you truly can't. Winning, winning is they are. Winning. They're they're good at making plays when they have to. And and I don't know what I would do. You're better off with a team like Nebraska to guard Wisconsin than you are with a team like uh, Indiana, where you've got big guys out on the floor. I mean, the big guys out on the floor make it much more difficult to defend a team like Wisconsin. You're playing right into their hands. Hey, Kathy. And and I mean, I would truly. I would have gone small and thrown Justin Smith on one of those big guys, and if he po- overpowered me all day long, I'd have to live with it. But he wasn't going to beat me. For, I, w- I would have clogged that lane up before I would have 
let him stretch me out to get to the outside. I, I, not, I looked at earlier in fitness, he, he did have a lot, but he had seven assists on the day, which is which nice. Which is a, a lot, the most he's had in a long time. And Jeffrey points out, great, but how about some other guys? But that's that's Finnessy's job. Yeah, I mean, we to, finished with nine total, and he had seven of them. Yeah, he has got seven of them, so... I mean, he's not in there the whole time, so you wonder who's who's facilitating when he's not in there. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that that's an issue for him, but it, I mean, Indiana finishes the game with seven turnovers. That's probably close to a season low. I, I, mean, I don't know that it has to. I think it has to be. I, I can't remember. It's a game pretty close, if not. But I mean, they here, may have had here's six the once. problem with you know here, here's the real problem with that nine assists in a game with twenty field goals is just simply not enough. You're the guards are not creating. When you come to that, when you get to the point where you you're making that many field goals, all those baskets by Devonte, I think one of them was a was an actual assist. Hong Kong the rest of them were him dribb- dribbling all over the place and making tough, crazy shots. Uh, Joe brings up a point. He says, well, "I mean, instead of reading that, I'll let everybody else read it." But what did you think of of their designed play in the last five minutes of the game, their, their attack, the offense of what they were trying to get done, what they didn't get done. Did they do the things that you think they should have I'll tell you, here's what, I, here's what I liked. I liked the fact that they took a bunch of shots inside the lane. They didn't come down and start jacking up three-pointers. Now, they missed all those. I mean, Devontae airballs a shot from five feet. He doesn't ever – I mean, that teardrop is money for him. Finnessy misses a shot in there. Justin Smith, everybody, I heard people in here in Yogi's yelling about that was a bad shot that Justin Smith made. He's made that shot ten times in the last five games. Yeah, you, We'll take those plays. That were getting into the lane, I mean, I w- here, here's the issue. I wish they had, I think they would have made some of those had they shot those with nine minutes to go. You know, you start to, you get the alligator arm a little bit in the last two minutes. The legs start to go to, a little bit. Yeah. When you have to make it, when when the difference is, I mean, gets Indiana, a was down, Indiana was down by three and had four consecutive possessions that they got the ball back and, and held Wisconsin on. Yeah. You can't ask for more than that. They just missed shots inside the lane. I mean, Trace Jackson Davis missed a little bunny. Uh, Race Thompson missed a little bunny. Finnessy missed one. Devontae Green missed one. Justin Smith missed one. I mean, these are all in the last four minutes of the game. If they make two of those, Indiana probably has the lead and, and, and has a different outcome. I agree. So now we have to there, – there's no more regular season games. They have the opportunity to go to the NCAA tournament. I haven't looked at the – well, I guess there's no point. Purdue playing with Rutgers now, uh, and as Todd said, you're cheering for Purdue I now. think you're cheering for Purdue right now because you, you want Rutgers – if Rutgers loses this game and then loses the first game of the Big Ten tournament, I, I think they're out. Yeah. And, and Purdue, they don't even – Purdue's not even on the radar right now, Purdue which shocks through, me. Purdue has gone from first four out to like the second four. To like out. yeah, but to the to the thanks for playing bracket because I, they've got to be rooting for every. You know, here's here's what you don't know. Here's truly what we will not know until a week from Sunday. What does the committee do with a team like Northern Iowa? Okay, because what I said was Indiana or all the bubble teams needed Northern Iowa to go all the way through and win. But they did the only other thing you could accept, and that is lose the first game of their tournament because <laughs> now they're most likely out. They will not take Hopefully. two teams from that conference, you would not think. I would But you really won't know. I mean, Northern Iowa was a team that was ranked in the last month. I mean, but they've also lost three of their last four games. So can you take a team out of that conference – and put them into the NCAA tournament losing three of their last four games? I I honestly don't think so. But we won't know that until a week from Sunday. Yeah, a lot Their of people tournament's over. A lot of people enjoyed the Yodeler during the free throws today. Yeah, yeah. You could a, hear I was beach. I was at the game and it was I, I never did see who it was, but it was she had that crowd fired up. I mean they were I'll tell you what, her husband funny. her husband deserves an award. <laughs> if he comes in here, people will buy him a beer because if he goes home with that, he is a your gentlemen. So what does this team have to do? Their, their first game, they just have to win, obviously. And we don't know who they're going to end up playing. It might be, it's going to be either Nebraska or Northwestern. It has to be one of the two. I'm almost positive um, it's already Nebraska. Second, they could end up playing Because the Purdue last two again. teams are going to be, the, the, the absolute last two teams will be Northwestern and, and uh, Nebraska. So Indiana will play, for sure, will play Minnesota, right? Now, no, 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 no. 
It, well, it could be. Depending on how this game ends up with Rutgers and Purdue right yeah, now, as a matter of fact, the score, uh, Purdue leading 21-17 over Rutgers but early, or in the first half with six minutes to go. It, it, it's, uh, this, this team has got – no, I'm, no, no, no. It, so it is, it is, it is going to be Nebraska. So it, Indiana will play Nebraska. Minnesota will play Northwestern. And Nebraska gave Indiana a tough game way, way back when they first came to Bloomington. Uh, and if you could pick it, pick any of those teams to play, that's the one you'd pick. A- absolutely, because they they match up better against them. I think. Well, and Northwestern can outsmart you. I mean, they'll they'll smart you. They'll Princeton <laughs> offense you to death you until the they get kids. enough. Hey. Until they get enough layups. That I mean, that you just. You don't, never know what you're going to get with Northwestern, and they they actually are pretty darn good. I mean, Nebraska Nebraska has played better throughout the season. I mean, they've, they've played decent, but they're the team you would rather play. Archie, the, the heat on Archie had kind of dissipated here of late. Uh, if they don't make the tournament, he can expect it to turn it back up. Yeah, that's right. But, and I don't mean that mean. I, I love Archie. I it, think but even I with think that – He's not going anywhere, so let's get that out of here. But the heat will be there, and deservedly so. You you have to have a little heat when after three seasons – if you don't get in the tournament, every um, kid on the roster is going. You're going to be responsible for it. And this is so going to be a first. If he does not, this will be the first time. It, it went that four four classes have not made Since the tournament. Seventy one. Wow. It's a lot to let go. Hopefully, Since that's not going to be the case. Since World War One. Well, that's a long time. Had to bring Coach Knight back. <laughs> uh, Linda says led most of the game. So sad to see that happen. Tim Rutgers up over pretty yeah uh eric says hey hey eric how you guys doing we appreciate everybody joining us here I- indiana has they, they had this opportunity this was not they didn't do this at least against uh, a mid-level team they, they did it against a team who's won eight straight who's who ends up winning the big 10 title so th- that's all nice and good but at the end of the day it's a loss that's hanging on you at home no less and here here's they have to co- overcome that how do you overcome that mentally todd and then prepare for the big 10 tournament next week because you, you got to turn right around and get you to don't. it. You just turn around and prepare for the Big Ten tournament. And, and you have to understand, hey, look, we've got to look at what's in front of us. Does none of us, it doesn't do you and me and everybody on here, it doesn't do any of us any good to sit here and beat them up over this or dwell on the past or talk about Archie or talk about the offense or defense. Look at what's in front of you. Look at the opportunity that you have in front of you, and that is go beat Nebraska and then turn around and probably play – who will be the five seed? Ohio State probably play uh, Iowa or Ohio State. The good thing is that second game, every one of those teams are They're teams that Indiana them. is capable They're of beating. All, they beat them, already. and they may have already beaten they them beat in, them in them most already. cases. So yeah. the the first game will allow Indiana to notch their twentieth win on yeah. the season, which that's a nice milestone. I don't think that's not happened under Archie Miller since he's been here. So that would be good. I think that they win one game, they're in this tournament. The Big Ten has just been too strong all season, and. If you look at you know, folks, you will look at something. You look at uh, bracket matrix or bracketology matrix. Matrix. It takes every it bracketology out. out there and averages. Indiana was on eighty of eighty-one brackets, I believe, of people that are doing it. Eighty of eighty-one. I think it was an average of around a nine seed. So this loss today, to me, is not going to push them out, even though it may appear that it, way. I'll tell you what. If it weren't for Lenardi, if it weren't for what I watched yesterday out of Lenardi, I would. I would still Feel a lot say, better, I would still say they're in. <laughs> but watching him last night, and his his special was on there to talk about the Big Ten and, and Purdue and Indiana. And he, he basically said, look, when he said, I'm creating a new category and it is too many losses and Purdue doesn't qualify because they just have too many losses, I'm sitting there going, but you're telling me Northern Iowa is in. You put Northern Iowa in the Big Ten and they wouldn't have finished close to 500. No. Not, a, not even a chance. And see, that's the kind of things that, that, that not, that's that's what pisses me off. Like I'm a big conference. We're big conference people. Look, I mean, we're from the Big Ten. I think the power conferences deserve a little bit of a nod because they play better competition on a more regular basis. Another example is right now you've got a, a fight going on between two middlings, Dayton and, and San Diego State, on who's going to be that final number one seed. I think Dayton deserves it personally because I think they. But they don't, believe it or not, San Diego State actually has more higher-valued wins than Dayton does. Uh, so, Okay, so so here's an example of what I'm talking about. And this is uh, – oh, shoot, it's not going to show up on here. It was on here earlier. So so here here's an example of what I'm talking about. you got tomorrow in the Big Ten alone. We don't know what time the game is yet it's on Wednesday, Zach. Or maybe you've got do. Michigan and Maryland playing each other. Okay? Maryland is playing at home, playing against – 
top 25 rated Michigan. Maryland will be almost a double digit favorite in that game. Okay? But if they played that game at Michigan, Michigan would be favored. Yeah. We've seen that for the last three weeks. We've seen that. They are today in this game, Purdue Rutgers. Rutgers is so much higher than it. Purdue's favored in this game. Indiana was favored today over a team tied for the Big Ten lead in Wisconsin. Indiana was favored. So how can a person like Joe Lenardi not look at this and say, we have to value, if if not in any other year? Look, two years ago when the bit when the ACC was so deep, I think they had nine teams ranked at one point in time. I was the first one to say, they deserve, if the Big Ten has to sit two extra teams because those teams get in, they deserve to get in because they battled each other all year How many did the Big Ten get in last year? Four? Yeah. It was a weak league for the ten last year. And now this is ten, just we'll because ten. this happens to be one of the, one of the years the Big Ten should be the recipient of that nod. All of a sudden now they want to look at the, everything the, 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 the you know the the mid the quote mid majors and look, Northern Iowa played themselves into the tournament all year long. And this is when you make a choice to go to a school like a Northern Iowa, okay? You pretty much know you've got to have an unbelievable season, and they had an unbelievable season up till 10 days ago. They've lost three out of four games in the last two weeks. And so they did not, at the end of the day, you know, it's like it's like having a lead at halftime of a game. And what do the coaches always say? like today's it's Indiana. 40, it, what do coaches say at that point? It's a 40-minute 40 40 game. game. You know? Well, it's a blank number of game season and you can't give up at the end of it and still expect to be rewarded with a win so there's if they i don't see any way that they keep that they keep a team like northern iowa in in or somewhere like that but that's one of several conferences the atlantic 10 is going to be another one it, there's good there's several conferences at san diego state hey let me tell you right now root for san diego state to win you don't want boise you don't want any of these other teams winning uh, Chad, no, I, I'm pretty sure that's not. Todd's not saying that the Big Ten isn't good. That's not at all what he was saying. Uh, it's, it's. I'm e- saying the exact opposite. opposite. It's, it's extraordinarily deep. If what I just said deep. came across that, then I have a poorer way of describing things because I'm saying the exact opposite. This is the year of the Big Ten. I truly believe you could take you could take Rutgers right now and put them in the. You could take Purdue and put them in the tournament, and they can make the Sweet 16. They can literally beat. Almost anyone. Now, they can't beat the top five or six teams in the country. But I honestly don't think Michigan can beat the top five teams in the country. I don't think Ohio State can beat the top five teams in the country. I I, I think the Big Ten from a 1 to 11 depth chart is so much deeper than every other conference. It's not even fun. John, my buddy John, W. Wisconsin wins with fundamentals, block out, rebound, get all the 50-50 balls, win game at cr- and crunch time. True, exactly. I think Indiana could to do themselves a big favor by looking to – this is a great team to emulate for them because I think that they can emulate them. But, I mean, you want to be your own team, of course. But, man, they do the little things, and it's like they do every little thing. It reminds me of you when you talk about how Coach Knight was with everything was gone over and over and over, and it was repetition. That's what they look like. They look like a team that has run the same play 50 times over, and they do it with almost perfection. I mean, so, so just look at this. Brad Davison has 11 points in this game, okay? Nothing great. He shot eight times. But he made two plays at the end of this game. He made a gigantic three-pointer that put him up by three when it was tied. And he got fouled and went and made two free throws at the end of the game. He scored and he was over two five of his 11 points. That I right. Think. He was five of, it, uh, five of his 11 points come in the last minute and a half of the game. And... That's where you look at it, and you're saying, "Okay, I'm not. I'm not singling a playing player out. I'm saying this because they were who was in the game." You look at Rob Finnessy, and you look at Justin Smith, and you look at Trace Jackson Davis, and you got nothing from those guys in the last, I'll say, five minutes, just to just to put a number on it. But I'll say throughout the majority of the game, and I'm not saying that to pick on them. I'm giving the credit to Wisconsin and saying. Those guys make – Brad Davidson seemed like so much bigger a part of this game than a guy who had 11 points. I mean, he looked he, – he made a huge three-pointer and stepped up and made those two free throws like he's been doing it his whole life. And that's what Indiana's guards have to get to. There's a question that's asked every game. Who's going to step up? Yeah. Well, it was 
guys with their names on a Wisconsin jersey today that stepped up, and that's that's the truth. In the last five I mean, minutes, I don't Indiana know, didn't have anybody step up. If you've watched Wisconsin play throughout the year, and and you know you you think about their good players and guys who step up and make plays and all that, no one on this. I mean, the Rovers kid is probably gets a lot of notoriety for being good because he's their best player. But there's no one on this team that is an outstanding player. I said there's no one that's probably going to make the top team in the Big Ten. There might not be a player that makes the top two in the Big Ten, two teams in the Big Ten. They just play well together, and they understand how to play. And, and you know, it's fun to watch basketball when it gets to that point. I don't know how that's possible. I'm, I'm a, oh, I had their second half, full game. Minutes played, one, two, three, four, five, six. Wisconsin, six yep. players playing the bulk of their minutes. To me, I look at their team, and I see guys that are in a rhythm, and they stay in a rhythm. Yep. I look at Indiana, and I see a team that is in sections. Now you take this section out. Here comes this team. You take that team out. They keep putting these Indiana sections in, and it does, they can't get into a rhythm. To me. Indiana had nine players that played more than 11 minutes. I don't see how you can get into a flow or a rhythm, and maybe sometimes – you're not going to get into that rhythm, but when you are, let it go. And I don't. Yeah. I, I think it seems like things are always chopped before they're they're allowed to live out their life. Yeah. I, I'm. I mean, you and I have. He said, agrees with me. You and I. Yeah. You and I have said all year long. We don't understand the substitution pattern. Archie. Archie has more of an NBA style. I'm shocked that Devontae and, Dur- and Duran started today. To be truthful, it's Senior Day. <laughs> and, and, and but you know what? You can't blame anything on that because they scored the first 14 points of the game. Oh, absolutely! The they played great. Duran dove on the ball like it, he was it, on the it, floor. His effort was there today. Look, if this game is is in February, you know, three or four weeks ago, we have no problem with it. And I, I, I'd say that tongue in cheek, like I always have a problem with losses, but. We're not, we're not, the, you know, the world's not ending. It's not kicking us out of the tournament. But we, the effort was there. It just, they just didn't make the plays. Now, I have no idea if I can, I'm not confirming this, but someone says that the, the yodeler was apparently Trice's mom, maybe, which that'll be funny. I, I will try to find that out. That That's funny. But uh, if you're not knowing about the yodeler, that was a. Well, then, then I, I respect Travis more than I did before. <laughs> Uh, Eric says Brunk needs to put on uh, be put on the bench. So he needs to play, and well, he had a great game last time. Did, yeah, could not get going again today. You know, I, I'm not looking to pick on, on and, and I'm not looking to worry about lineup changes. You know what I need? Fantasy was on the floor. He needed to contribute more. Al Durham was on the floor. He needed to contribute more. Justin Smith was on the floor a lot and needed to contribute more. It, we didn't have that big of an issue. Now look, did Brunk play well? No, but he only played 11 minutes. Like he didn't. It wasn't like he took the bulk of the minutes out there. I mean, Race Thompson. Everyone, you know, Race Thompson has seven points, but he's only one of five shooting. He had seven points, 11 rebounds, and he could have played a lot better. I mean, that's. You know who played zero minutes today? And I'm not talking about Franklin. Armand Franklin. Yeah. Surprised me a little bit with everyone, but I mean, not, 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 not you know, really. No, I mean, Armand is struggling so bad offensively that I think it's hurting his defense a little bit now, and and I just, I mean, I don't, I don't know that there was room to put him on the floor tonight. I mean, I, I wanted him to play a less of a rotation than what they already played. Well, yeah, when you look at the Wisconsin, that's my purpose of looking at them because when you see that those guys, they're in a flow. They're the playing only the game. That play nine or ten guys are like the Baylor's and the West Virginias who have that depth. Well, but also like they are helter skelter, full court pressing you, trapping they need, you all they need over the, the place. Bread. Like they're they're playing guys. You know, like North Carolina used to have a rotation, almost like a hockey exchange. I mean, they were <laughs> they were substituting. It was seriously in the Dean Smith days. It was like every two and a half minutes. You only played like two and a half minutes in a row. It came out. I, and that, to me, like I always thought that was a recruiting issue because I, there's no way I would go play for a place that told me I was only going to play two, minute, two and a half minute stints. Chris Reynolds for AD. Hey, it's going to be interesting to see who the new AD is. I uh, haven't heard a single word about that. If it's not Scott Dolson, then they're making a mistake. And I love Chris Reynolds. He's one of my friends. Well, I don't think Chris I've is even – I think it's either going to be Scott or Pat Kraft. I don't think Chris is – I've not heard him really mention much past I know, I know early on. that, that – uh, I do know that his, he has requested an interview. Let's put it that way. Oh, I'm sure. He deserves so. The truth is with us, Robert Carter. 
So now, now it's now it's, hey, it's hurry up and wait. Here's the fun, not so fun part: is we got to sit here and wait till Wednesday, and they've got to come out and have a really good, strong performance. And the worst case is you got to listen to Joe and Artie talk for the next four days yeah. of how. You know, you know what we did. We just fueled Joe Lenardi's fire. But which guess what? Makes me want to guess who's on the show Tuesday? We don't have to worry about Joe Lenardi. We got Mike DeCorsi on. We so the, we're going to do Mike DeCorsi bracketology, man. Uh, yeah, we'll be doing that. So Lenardi's also. a poser. Looking forward to that. Also, Calvert's on the show next week as well. Calvert Cheney, looking forward to that. And I'm talking about the Indiana Sports Beat, our daily show at 9 a.m. Uh, with Coyle and Larry, of course. So make sure you tune in tomorrow because we'll be back back at it. You can also find us, our shows always on Rivals, thehoosier.com, as we're now a part of the Rivals platform and grateful to be there. Make sure you go there, sign up. It costs nothing. Go sign up, get yourself a Rivals account just to have it because we are going to be pumping out uh, free content for you there. But, uh, Todd, as we keep going tomorrow, we're back at it, back on the show again. We'll be talking about this. But this team has got to get out of this. I don't want. They're not in a funk, but today was they just could not get over that hump, yeah. and they've got to get to a point where they are the team that finishes the game yeah. against a tough team. It really, you know, here's the difference. Here's the difference in what Indiana fans are used to, and I mean used to like 30 years ago, 25 years ago, versus now, is when you when you put yourself in a position to win a game like that, and you they win it. Indiana usually almost always wins that game, and for several years they've struggled to, to pull those off, and, and a lot of that comes from. You know, leadership and and experience and confidence. And I would not classify Indiana. Indiana physically, player for player, is more talented. If you line them up, you take Fennessey versus Trice. I'll take Fennessey. You take Brad more Davidson versus Justin long. Smith. I'll take Justin Smith. Like, you just sit there all day long and you look at player's body and player's body and what they're good at. Indiana is better than Wisconsin at every single position. Now... Flip that back around and let's give them the same test and let's go with basketball IQ. I think Wisconsin probably wins every single position. And that's something that they will gain through experience and time. And we just don't have a lot of that. We don't we don't have patience. No nope. Indiana fans. We don't I don't expect if, if, when I start becoming more okay with losing, just punch me right in the face. <laughs> hey, get out and watch a high school basketball game tonight. Tonight's sectional championship night. There's a ton of great games, by the way. You got Floyd Central uh, playing down in Seymour for a, re- a sectional crowd. Who are they crowd. playing tonight? Who are they playing tonight? Yeah, I'm going to guess it's, I don't know, Jennings County or Bedford. It could be Bedford. That could be a great matchup from the old days. you got uh, Anthony Leal and Bloomington uh, South over in Columbus going for a title. I know Trey Galloway is active going for a title up north. Christian Lander down in Evansville going for a title. A lot of guys still active, so a lot of great. I'm looking forward to hopefully going to Seymour next week because you're going to have Floyd, Bedford, or Bloomington, and who all, I don't know who all will be there, but it's, it's always a great regional. What day? Saturday. It'll be next Saturday. Indiana will be in the semifinal in the Big Ten tournament. <laughs> how are you going to do? How are you going to squeeze all that in? Yeah, we'll get you a. We'll get you a. We'll get you a helicopter. Yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll I'll, I'll use that. If Ned Fowl, I'll send Ned Fowl <laughs> please to come that. get you. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, I'm I'm just grateful for everybody joining us here on live after the games with uh, Todd Larry, and of course we're always here at Yogi's after each and every game. Uh, now that's going to change next week when we're in the in Indianapolis for the Big Ten tournament. We'll be coming to you from the tap up in Indianapolis. So uh, make sure you can jo- please join, join us. us in there because they will have an area marked off in there. Yeah, for we got a whole room. Indiana only. So come on over. We're going to have fun and we'll uh, watch the games. You can watch some other games or maybe watch some games beforehand as well. Also, go to Rivals and get yourself an account because we're going to be providing plenty of great stuff for you there. Uh, just sign up. It didn't cost anything. Final words, man. The waiting game. The Jimmy waiting Sutton, game. I almost left Jimmy Sutton out. Jimmy Sutton, our interns. You got anything that you need to add, you can add? Any good stats for us, Jimmy? He's shaking his head. Nothing today. It's a Saturday. He had a long Friday night, I'm sure. Jimmy gets no student. camera. Jimmy gets no camera time today. He's got nothing to contribute. He's he had like a uh, long Friday night. Oh, I, did he? I, I haven't heard, heard about I that. Heard one. About I got to hear that story. Yeah. So. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you know, the waiting game sucks, and and you know, I you ex- what you said. You couldn't be more true. To me, for me to have to listen to Joe Lenardi for the next five days, I just want to vomit. Like he he is 
He all of a sudden to me, he, I swear at one point in time he went to Ohio State. And Mike DeCourcy, and he's not a homer, but he's he's giving Indiana a he's little a bit more love. He's a Big Ten homer, though. Mike and DeCourcy's a Big Ten homer. I don't, you can't call I'm him a homer. i that. But, <laughs> but, you know, he's not an Indiana person. Like, no. he, has no, he has no reason to like I, Indiana I think he's over. actually a little more correct. Especially after you look at all the matrix, uh, the the bracket matrices, they it's. I don't think Indiana's out right now. As crazy as this sounds, if you looked at all the, you, they probably know. dropped to an eleven seed. We won't know until no. all of the other, you know, the other conferences are going right now, which is awesome. That that's what you got to do for the next five days. You know, the, watching the A10 and the Mountain West. Yeah, and it's and not like everything. they lost to Nebraska today. I mean, they right. lost to a team that just won the Big if, Ten title. If this title. was flip flopped and they would have lost to Minnesota and beaten Wisconsin, I don't know that that would have been a great thing right. either. So yeah, it would have been uh, a horrible home loss. Yeah, you look at a, a bad loss like that might be better than a, a good win. But you know what? Here's the here's the deal. They have to win on Wednesday. If they don't win That's on a Wednesday, must win. I, I almost gnashing of teeth. I almost wouldn't want them to get in. You know, gnashing of teeth. And I'm only saying that from the perspective of I would not necessarily think they deserve it. Right now, I still think they're fine. As long as they beat Nebraska, I still think they're fine. But but you know, I, I don't you know what this win today could have done? It could have eliminated me having to worry about that. You know what it, you know what one thing today's win would have guaranteed? It would have guaranteed they were not playing in that play in game on Tuesday in Dayton. That would have guaranteed today's win would have guaranteed that. I think they could still win on Wednesday and lose the next game on Thursday and and make the tournament, but be, still be an 11 seed and play in that play in game. It's going to be tight. And how ironic would it be to for Archie Dayton. to be playing for his life in Dayton? Well, he's comfortable in that gym, so hopefully he can get everybody else comfortable. Absolutely. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us. Of course, we're coming to you live from Yogi's after the game with Todd Lurie, brought to you by Best Beer Incorporated of Bloomington. They're uh, Coronas, two bucks all month here at Yogi's. These are virus free, by the way, Coronas. Uh, Henry Nethery, Remax Realty as well. Thanks a lot to him. Uh, everybody at Rivals, Todd Leary, I'm Jim Coyle. Until tomorrow morning. No, tomorrow Sunday. Monday morning. Boiler up. Nine. Hey, get out of here. Boiler up. <laughs> right That's where you go. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you on the radio.